So magpapatuloy po tayo sa ating sermon series. Do you remember our sermon series? Yes, Moving in Power Sermon Series. So, yung ating pong message one is entitled, The Person of the Holy Spirit. And the second message was, Pentecost. Pentecost, pinalitan po ni Pastor Jay yung title, ginawa niyang Pentecost, The Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, original sermon series po natin ay uh, Pentecost, Wind and Fire. And today, we will be talking about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Are you excited? Okay. So, ang ating pong scripture verse for today is from Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. May we all stand for the reading of the word? Let's read Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You may be seated. Salamat po sa pakikiisa nyo sa pagbasa ng salta ng Diyos, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But before we start, uh, shout out to the birthday celebrants. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Sis Lynn and Sis Mara. And si Sis Lynn Carta kahapon yung birthday niya. So Lynn B today, Lynn Carta yesterday, and Mara also today. Happy birthday, beautiful ladies. Empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about the Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We learned that the first empowerment of the Holy Spirit to the believers happened on the past Pentecost day, <clears throat> during the Pentecost. Ito yung time while well, the disciples and other believers, total of 120 people, are waiting in the upper room. Ang sabi nga ni Pastor Jay, senior niya sa atin, they are probably creating uh, an atmosphere of prayer because they were waiting for the promise of the Father. Because Jesus Christ, after He was raised from the dead, nung nag-resurrect po ang Panginoong Yesus, and before He ascended into heaven, while He was with His disciples, yun po yung binasa natin sa Acts chapter 1, sabi po doon, sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, do not leave. Just wait. Jesus commanded the believers not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father and He stated that they, the believers, will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is a new thing para sa mga apostles although they keep hearing the Lord Jesus Christ from the book of John before the last supper Jesus keeps telling them that it is to your advantage that I am going to leave because if I'm not going to leave the Holy Spirit will not come upon you so makikita po natin there is expectancy here now I believe that these early believers were already filled with mixed emotions Mixed emotion na ang nararamdaman nitong mga believers na ito. Bakit po? Especially the disciples. Because these disciples have been with Jesus for three years. They witnessed Jesus healing the sick. Yung pinagaling niya yung mga may lepers. Pin binigyan niya ng paningin yung mga bulag. Nakalakad yung mga pilay. Yung mga ipinanganak na walang mga tumubo yung kanilang mga paa. Nag... Bumuhay siya ng mga patay, nakita sila, nakita siya ng mga disciples na ginawa ang mga bagay na ito. But then, etong mga disciples, nakuha pa rin nila na i si Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crow. Kung natatandaan nyo po, pag-aaralan natin ito sa darating na Lent. Etong mga disciples niya, except for John the Beloved, they all scattered. Nagtakbuhan sila noong inares ang Panginoong Yesus doon sa Garden of Gethsemane. So these disciples, most probably, I'm thinking po, they were so excited while waiting for the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord Jesus Christ promised them that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, you will receive power. How excited and expectant they could be. Diba? 
Yung naranasan po nila na si Jesus, uh, si, si Peter, dininay niya si Jesus. And we believe that Jesus was so, uh, sorry, Peter was so repentant. Kaya nga nung bago mag-ascend ang Panginoong Jesus, He restored Peter into discipleship. Sabi niya, do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, I love you. Because... Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. And three times the Lord Jesus Christ asked him, Do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, Lord, yes, I love you. So si Peter, he knows his weaknesses. Alam niya yung kahinaan niya. Alam niya yung pagkukulang niya. So when the Lord Jesus Christ told them, the disciples, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, I'm sure yung heart ni Peter, he was so expectant. He needs power. Do you need power? We all need power. Imagine in po ninyo kapag may nangako sa inyo today. Oh, sis Mara, since birthday mo naman. Not many days from now, I will give you iPhone 14 Pro Max. One terabyte. Okay. Fully paid. Lakas ng signal nun. Kapag fully paid. Siguro sis Mara, araw-araw, anong, kaya, anong araw kaya niya ibibigay yun? Huh? Imagine niyo po na if someone is extremely ill and and someone promised to him or her that many day, not many days from now you will receive healing. Diba? Pag mayroon tayong pangangailangan sa kagalingan, lahat gagawin natin, probably you will be very excited. I need healing. I need healing. And if you are interviewed in a job, tapos kailangan, kailangan mo ng trabaho, and that interviewer told you that not many days from now, you will receive a call from me, I will ask you to come and sign your contract, and I will give you a job offer. Offer. Ito kasing pinato, minsan nawawala siya eh. Sana makita na siya. Okay, ito kasing yung offer. Probably, kapag tayo naka-experience ng ganon, we will be so excited. Wow, kailang kaya darating yung call na yun. Naranasan nyo na bang ma-interview sa trabaho tapos naghihintay kayo ng kung kailan kayo tatawagan? Iba maya at maya pag nag-ring yung phone nyo, ah, ito na yata yun. Ah, hindi pa rin. So, these disciples, in my heart, I believe, they are so expectant and they are so excited. Let's pray for a while. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know our weaknesses and you love us so much in spite of our weaknesses. That is why you give us the Holy Spirit to give us power and for us to be victorious Christian. Holy Spirit, it is your ministry. Just move in our midst. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we move forward, let us first see what the meaning of empowerment is. Ano ba po yung ibig sabihin ng empowerment? The word empowerment comes from the root word power. And there are two Greek words for power. Yung number one po is exousia. Exousia. This is a Greek word which translated authority. And this is the meaning na makikita po natin sa chapter 1 verse 7. Ang sabi po doon, And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the, fa the Father has put in His own authority. So yung authority po na sinasabi dito is yung uh, power na ipinagkalob sa kanya. For example, you are a manager, you are authorized to sign. To sign. So that is authority. And the other word that we are talking, we are going to talk about today is the word dunamis. Pakisabi mo nga, dunamis. It is a Greek word which is translated as power. So we get our English word dynamite from it. Alam niyo po yung dynamite, yung ginagamit sa pangingisda, na kapag sinisindihan, hinahagis yun sa dagat, tapos nag explode siya. So that's the power that the Holy Spirit is giving us. A dunamis power. An exploding power. A radical power. Hindi po siya ordinary. It is supernatural. Now, 
Though Jesus had finished all his work and was ready to return to glory, he knew that these believers were not ready to go out into the world into their, with their own power or strength. Alam ng Panginoong Yesus ang kininaan ng kanyang mga disciples at and other believers, kaya alam niya nakakailanganin nila ng Holy Spirit. He had already given them his authority, but now they would need another kind of power. They would need a type of power that literally could transform them. Do you want to be transformed? Doing any ministry in our own power will not work well. Apart from the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. Mga kapatid, being a Christian is not difficult. It is impossible. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot live a victorious Christian life. Jesus, He would not permit them to do anything. He instructs them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because this will empower them the way they need to be empowered for doing the works that Jesus was asking them to do. Yung iniiwanan na work ng Panginoong Yesus sa kanila, alam ng Panginoon na hindi nila magagawa. That is why they need supernatural power. They needed something more than just authority. They need transforming power. And that's what we need today. Narinig po natin yung word ng Panginoon through Sister Junina na pinagkalooban. I was praying po kanina habang nagpe-praise and worship tayo, Lord, give us your word of wisdom. Give us your word of knowledge. Because mga kapatid, a Holy Spirit-filled church can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I believe na yung word ng Panginoon through Sister Junina ay para sa atin. God loves us. And we love that, right? Ang sabi niya, isuko na natin yung ating mga kasalanan. Yun ang ayaw natin. Brethren, the message that we have today are for everyone, not only for believers. Hindi lamang po para sa mga mananampalataya ang message na inihanda ng Diyos para sa atin. The Holy Spirit, kapag po tinanggap natin ang Panginoong Yesus bilang Lord and Savior, Savior, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Namamahay sa atin ang banal na spirito. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit. He indwelt us. He resides in our hearts. Aren't you happy that wherever you go, God is with you? And the topic is also for unbelievers. Why? Because even, hindi pa po tayo nananampalataya sa Panginoon. Hindi pa tayo nakakilala sa Panginoong Yesus. Kasama na natin ang banal na spirito. Kaya nga tayo naririto ngayon because the Holy Spirit convicted us. Yung tinatawag niyong konsensya, that's the still small voice of the Holy Spirit telling us there are different voices na naririnig tayo. Your voice, the voice of the enemy, and the voice of God. The reason we are here today is because we listen to the voice of God. And we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Alam niyo mga kapatid, sinasabi ng Biblia, malinaw na malinaw, John chapter 16 verses 8 to 9. And when He has come, He will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in Me. And this word is for the unbelievers. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. Now, Why? Because 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 answered that. Because God wants all people to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Mga kapatid, once we are saved, we need the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be able to do what God wants us to do. Do you want to do the works that God wants you to do? That is why we have the Holy Spirit. Meron siyang pinapagawa sa atin. Remember mga kapatid, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a one-time event. Isang beses lang po ito nangyayari in the life of a believer. But in feeling is a continuous event or experience. Continuous po ang in feeling. And how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit for empowered service or ministry? Paano po ba natin ito mararanasan? Mga, pat, mga kapatid, kahit ayaw niyong tanggapin, you are called to serve God. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, with conviction, you are called to serve God. (laughs) 
Be faithful. May karugtong si pastor. Be faithful. <laughs> Some people might not understand it completely because they don't know yet the purpose of God sa kanilang mga buhay. And even before, no, hindi pa natin kilala ang Panginoon, nabubuhay lang tayo araw-araw, kumakain, natutulog, nagtatrabaho para kumain, para may pambili ng pagkain, para bumibili ng pagkain, para may lakas, para magtrabaho. Paulit-ulit ang ating mga buhay, hindi natin nakikita yung purpose natin. But to you who already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have to understand and accept. Pakisabi nga, accept. Kasi yung iba sa atin, ayaw nating tanggapin eh. We have to understand and accept the fact that you are called to serve Him and that your life is from Him, through Him, and for Him. Kahit ayaw nyong tanggapin kapatid, tanggapin nyo na lang para hindi kayo mahirapan. Napahirapan nyo pa sarili nyo eh. Now, how many of you here consider yourself as a disciple of Christ? Can you raise your hand? Do not be shy. If you consider yourself as a disciple of Christ, alam niyo po ba, disciple means follower or student. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit already dwelling within you. He resides in you. Now, God wants to equip and empower you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Kasi hindi lamang natin siya basta tinanggap. Eh meron siyang trabaho yung pinapagawa sa atin eh, kaya binigay sa atin ang Holy Spirit. And God wants to empower us for us to be able to that great task na iniatang sa atin ng Panginoon. Aren't you privileged? Hindi po ba natin nararamdaman yung privilegio na ako? Sino ba ako? Hindi nga ako nakapag-aral. Sino ba ako? Ang pandak ko nga. Sino ba ako? Pero tinanggap ako ng Panginoon. Hindi lang niya ako tinanggap, tinawag niya ako for a purpose and He has great task for me. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13, ito po nangyari yung Pentecost. Babasahin ko lang po ito ng mabilis because tinuro na sa atin to ni Pastor Joel last week. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, hinug na hinug na, had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, nasa isang lugar po sila, ganito, katulad natin, nagtitipon, and they, and they are creating an atmosphere of prayer, and here we are creating an atmosphere of prayer, worship, and listening. Now, and suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty Wind. Hindi po sinabing nagkaroon ng malakas na hangin. Mayroon pong sound na parang malakas na hangin. So kung naiimagine nyo po yung bagyo na may malakas na hangin, ganun po yung sound na narinig nila. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. So there are 120 people in that room at that moment. And how many are we in this room right now? If we are 40 in this room or 50 in this room, I believe in my heart and it is my heart's desire that each of one, each one of us will receive tongues of fire today. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude the multitude came together and were confused. Nalito po sila, naguluhan sila because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Dahil po Pentecost ito, isa po itong kapistahan, isang okasyon na maraming mga dumadayong taga-ibang lugar. So sino po yung mga dumayo dito? Verse 9, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, to Phrygia and, um, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both 
Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking, speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So meaning to say po, nung narinig sila nitong mga ibang lahi na nandoon sa labas ng upper room, naririnig silang lahat. Ang sabi nitong mga tao, nagsasalita sila ng aming wika at ang sinasabi nila ay mga wonderful works of God. So meaning to say, itong mga tao sa upper room, nagwo-worship. Nagwo-worship sila. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? And others mocking said, they are full of new wine. Kapag lasing daw po ang tao, nawawala sa sarili, right? Hindi alam yung kanilang ginagawa. I always remember Pastor Steve whenever I teach this because Pastor Steve used to teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit in EGR. So sabi niya, nung bata siya, sabi nung uncle niya, huwag ka nang mag-aral, mag-inom ka na lang. Kasi daw po pag lasing siya, English siya ng English. Sabi niya kung nalalaman ko lamang. Because when we are filled with wine, we are filled with other spirit, yung spirit ng wine, nagagawa po natin yung hindi natin gustong gawin or hindi natin nagagawa dati. Kung ang lalaki, alam nyo ba ang mga lalaki sa probinsya, sa lugar namin, nagiinom muna bago umakyat ng ligaw. Kasi daw, pag sila ay lasing na, nasasabi na nila yung, I love you. Pero tayo, praise God, we don't need to be drunk to say, I love you. And it is our heart's desire always that we will be filled with the Spirit of God, not of alcohol or wine. Now, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit deepens your relationship with God. When we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, our relationship with God the Father and Jesus Christ, the God the Son, prepares us to take part in growing the church and advance, advancing the kingdom of God here on earth. Mga kapatid, as I said earlier, may plano ang Diyos sa buhay natin. You, 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 lahat tayo dito, may plano ang Diyos. Kabahagi tayo ng plano ng Diyos para sa ikalalaganap, ikalalawak ng kanyang kaharian dito sa lupa. Do you like that? Do you want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit? Today, receive the power. Receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to receive? To be baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit as defined by Scripture does not mean that you do not have the Holy Spirit. Because as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. As a believer, as a disciple of Jesus, you already have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Further, it does not mean getting more of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is one. Rather, it is a matter of letting the Holy Spirit have more of you. Are you willing to give your life to the Holy Spirit? Pakonti ng pakonti ang amen. Mga kapatid, there are obviously endless differences in maturity and effectiveness among Christians. All of Christ and all of the Spirit is offered to all Christians. Wala pong pinipili and withheld from none. As the great gift of God's grace and the difference arise not between haves and have-nots it, it, in regard to the Spirit but solely from the, solely from the degree to which Christians have entered into enjoyment of the inheritance that belongs to all of them and possess the possession that are for all in Christ. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Wala pong pinipili ang Diyos. Wala siyang tinatangi. Wala siyang kinikilingan. Ang difference lang po ay kung gaano ba tayo kawiling. God empowered those who are willing. What could God accomplish with a man or woman who has fully surrendered his or will to God? His or her will to God? Have you fully surrendered your life to Christ? Mga kapatid, there is no set formula in empowerment of the Holy Spirit. God is sovereign and He moves in different ways in our lives. Ibang pagkilos niya sa buhay mo, ibang, ibang pagkilos niya sa buhay ng mga kapatid dito, ibang pagkilos ng Diyos sa buhay ko. But growing in having the Holy Spirit for power is simply a matter of being in love with Jesus. 
submitting to his will and ways, receiving in faith and stepping out in obedience. Obedience matters. Mga kapatid, napakahalaga po ng heart na obedient. Number one po, thirst for intimacy. Thirst for intimacy. Ito pong thirst na ito leads us to Christ who gives the living water of the Spirit of God. Nung naghahanap po tayo ng kasagutan, ng, 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 naramdaman natin once in our lives yung longing because we feel the emptiness in our heart. Meron tayong naranasan na kakulangan sa ating puso. And kahit mananampalataya na po tayo mga kapatid, kay nakailangan pa rin nating magkaroon ng thirst. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ quenched our thirst. But katulad nga po nung sinabi ni David, ito po first of all, a thirst for intimacy with God because we already have Jesus in our life. So we should have a thirst for intimacy with God. Hindi lamang po basta-basta gigising tayo sa umaga at papasok sa trabaho. Sabi po ni David, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Oh, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Ito po yung kauhawan na pagising pa lamang natin sa umaga, si Lord na yung dinidesire natin kausap. But the reality is, pagising natin sa umaga, cellphone ang ating kausap. Sinong nag-text? Makapanood nga muna ng FB. Mga kapatid, the Lord is waiting for us daily to come to Him. And we should have that kind of desire, the kind of thirst. Yung sinabi po ni David, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. Alam niyo po yung, may picture po dyan, yung tigang na lupa, yun yung dapat nating nararamdaman. Kung hindi po natin niya nararamdaman, ipag-pray natin ang ating mga sarili. I pray, Lord, give me that desire. Give me that hunger and thirst for your word. Kasi kung hindi po, mga kapatid, hindi. Yung flash natin, ang gusto natin mag-Facebook. Yung flash natin, gusto natin manood ng YouTube. Yung flash natin, yung gusto natin makipag-chat. Yung flash natin, gusto natin manood ng TV. It is only the Holy Spirit can give us that desire. Kaya part po yan. Second is a thirst that arises out of a profound awareness of our own inadequacy to do the works of God. Ito po yung thirst na kailangan natin mga mananampalataya because we are acknowledging that we cannot do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. Lagi natin minsan iniisip, Lord, bakit ganito? Lagi na lang akong kalunan. Lord, konting problema lang ang hina-hina ko na. Lord, konting pagsubok lang ayaw ko na sumusuko na ako. Lord, konting makita ko lang na pagkukulang ng kapwa ko na titisod na ako. Why? Mga kapatid, we should have that kind of thirst, thinking that we are inadequate and we need the Holy Spirit to empower us. Na kahit anong pagsubok, hindi tayo matitinag. Ang sabi po ng John chapter 15 verse 5, apart from me you can do nothing. Number one, thirst. Number two, expect the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. Expect the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. You should expect. Mga kapatid, sa puso natin, we should be expectant. If we are praying, we should expect. For many of us, our God is too small and our expectations of the Christian life are too small. We have limited and tamed God by our fears, worldview, and lack of knowledge. Tayo mismo, pinapaliit natin ang Diyos sa ating pananaw, sa ating mga perspective, sometimes even in our lack of knowledge. Bakit po may mga tao, may mga Kristiyano na lulugulugo? Itutuloy ko yung sinabi ko kanina. Because we are lack of knowledge, we don't know that God is great and He is sovereign and that for Him, nothing is impossible. Konting pagsubok, lulugulugo na tayo. Yung mukha natin, hindi na mukhang ubas, mukha ng pasas. Kaya minsan maganda rin yung ganitong chubby, alam nyo ba? <laughs> Di ba? Kasi yung pag... pag... 
sabi nga, nung nag-pandemic, hindi natin inakala magkuklose ang mga groceries. Eh pag wala ka ng makain, kami tumapumapayat pa lang kayo, butot balat na. <laughs> We should be expectant. Expect the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. When we pray for it, expect it. And when we are expectant, we are ready to receive. Expectancy is an expression of unrestrained faith in God. Walang makakapigil na pananampalataya at ito yung nagpiprepare sa atin to receive and to do all that He has for us. Ang daming gustong ipagawa ni Lord sa atin. Ready ba kayo? Wala ko mo konti na. Tuloy pa natin. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Huwag po tayong matakot. Ang sabi po dyan, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Ang sarap pong pakinggan at ang sarap isipin na ang Diyos natin, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Higit pa sa iniisip natin, higit pa sa iniimagine natin, kayang Diyos, kaya ng Diyos gawin sa ating buhay. Eto po, paalala sa atin, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Claim natin to. Kung natatakot tayo, iniisip natin mag-fail tayo, just claim it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Kung natatakot tayong mag-ministry kasi iniisip natin, baka hindi natin kayang gampanan, baka ma-fail natin si Lord, claim it kapatid, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bakit hindi sinabi dito na, I can do all things because I'm strong? No. We can do things only through Christ who strengthens us. Number three, repent. Number one, thirst. Number two, expect. Number three, repent. You might be thinking, why do I need to repent? Kung iniisip nyo po na born again na kayo and you are follower of Christ, I already repented of my sins and pinatawad na ako ng Diyos and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Mga kapatid, remember, as human beings, we still sin. We leak every day and we still do. Sometimes we do think and say things that are not pleasing to God. Every moment, may pumasok pa lang na customer doon sa inyong tindahan, kung saan man kayo nagtatrabaho, hala, hindi na naman naligo itong madam na ito. Kahit sa asawa natin, di ba? Nagkakasala tayo sa isip, sa puso. We leak every day. Sa mga anak natin, mm, kagigil ka, pogi mo talaga. We leak every day. Nagkakasala po tayong patuloy. Marami tayong iniisip, ginagawa, sinasabi na hindi ka lugod-lugod sa Diyos. We sin because we are not perfected yet. Nasa katawang lupa po tayo. Alam niyo po yung katawang lupa natin na to, nagdi-deteriorate, nagdi Deteriorate ito. Subukan yung hindi maligo ng tatlong araw. Lumalabas yung singaw. It's true po. Scientifically speaking, because we came from the dust, di ba ang putik bumabaho siya, nabubulok? So ganun din po tayo. And we sin because we are not perfected yet. We still disobey and there are times that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are not manifested in us. Nalalagas ang fruits of the Holy Spirit. Nahuhulog. Sabi po ng Galatians chapter 5, 21-23, alam nyo po yan, fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Mayroon kayo nito? Amen da. Amen! Yeah. Kaya lang po minsan, nahuhulog. Diba? Yung patience natin, laging galit. Kapag galit yung asawa, mas galit pa. Self-control, faithfulness, mga kapatid, I believe all of us would say no. Wala tayo ng lahat ng ito. We're trying because this is what God wants us to have. We're trying but there are times na nalalagas talaga siya and Jesus commands us to love all people. Do we do that? 
All people? No. God wants us to be humble and obedient. Do we do that all the time? A resounding no. Pag may mayabang sa atin, wala yan sa nanay at tatay ko, mas mayabang pa tayo. Mga kapatid, as believers, we do not repent for salvation because we are already saved. We repent because we continuously commit sin, intentional and unintentional. I don't know po kung narinig nyo na to. There is a so-called sin of commission. These are sins that we commit. And there is a so-called sin of omission. Makikita nyo po dyan. Here, ito pong sin of omission. Yung sin of commission, alam na alam natin to. Nag-commit tayo ng ganito. Nangupit tayo. Nagsinungaling tayo. Gumawa tayo ng masama. Hindi ito kalugod-lugod sa Diyos. Alam natin yan. That is sin of commission. But sin of omission is not doing something that we ought to do. Sabi ng Diyos, maglingkod ka sa akin. Sabi ng Diyos, isurrender mo na yung buhay mo sa akin. Ang sabi ng Diyos, ito ang gawin mo. Hindi natin magawa kahit alam natin. And that is sin of omission. Brethren, repentance and confession should be an ongoing part of the Christian life. We should be humble enough to repent and to confess that we sin against God. Because sin blocks our relationship with God. So repentance is a basic criterion for spiritual growth. The more we acknowledge that we sin and that we do things against the will of God, that is a sign of spiritual maturity. Because dati, ang isip natin sa sarili natin, mabait naman ako. Di naman ako nangaragabyado ng kapwa. Di naman ako nangangalo niya. Wala pa akong napatay. <laughs> Wala pa daw siyang napatay. Ako po madami na manok sa lugar namin. Mga kapatid, we have to be careful also to balance this. One does not have to be perfect or have reached a high level of sanctification to receive the Holy Spirit because we cannot be perfect. If there were such a criterion for receiving the infilling, then none of us would be worthy. None of us would be qualified. This is given as a free gift of God's grace to all. Grace, is, is, grace means something is given to us that we don't deserve. We don't deserve the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, but this is by the grace of God. Mga kapatid, God is holy and as His children, He wants us to be holy and to grow in His likeness. Acknowledging our sins and shortcomings and asking for forgiveness and be willing to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit is a sign that we are ready to be used for His glory. Do you see yourself now habang nagsasalita po ako? Do you see yourself as someone who wants to surrender to God? Number four, surrender to the sovereignty of God. Sa isang gera po, kapag daw po yung isang warring side or yung isang op- kalaban, gusto na niyang mag-surrender, itataas niya yung kanyang white flag. Magtataas siya ng white flag, it means that they surrender, but also it means that they wish to initiate ceasefire and conduct battlefield negotiation. So nag-raise sila ng white flag. And it is a sign of humility and surrender. For us, when we sur- surrender to God, it means that we want to be under His ruling power. Kapag nag-surrender po tayo, ibig sabihin nagpapasakop tayo. It means that we cons- we consider what we consider ours is no longer ours. This includes our lives. Kung iniisip natin ang buhay natin ay para sa atin, para ipamuhay natin, kapag handa na tayong sumuko, sasabihin natin, Lord, this life is not mine. It's yours. I give it to you. This means we want to follow Jesus completely, 100%, 100%, not 50-50, not unos-nos, not shway-shway, 100%. Not few areas of our lives, Lord, dito ka lang makialama, pero dito wag, hindi pwede yan, akin to. Not when we are free, not when we want to. 
the question, mga kapatid, do you want to surrender? Last week, this was the very word that was given to me by the Holy Spirit. Surrender. Sabi ni Pastor Jay sa akin, nag-second altar call ka pa. Sabi ko, this is the word of the Holy Spirit to me. Surrender. If I will not follow, if I will not obey, hindi ako patautulugin ng banal na spirito. Uuwi ako ng bahay, miyat maya na iisip ko, bakit hindi ko sinabi? Bakit hindi ko ginawa? And today, it is a confirmation that God wants us to surrender our lives completely, fully to Him. And it, is, it was also given to Sis Junina earlier. Mga kapatid, sabi ng Matthew 16.24, When I preached this one Sunday, walang kumausap sa akin. Ang sabi din, Jesus said to His disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Is it easy? It's not. But are you willing? If you are willing, the Holy Spirit will empower you. Mga kapatid, I was at that point also, natakot akong mag-commit kay Lord. Alam niyo ba yung uh, uso ngayon sa relationship, okay, tayo na, pero walang commitment ha. Kay Lord, hindi po po pwede yun. Pag sinabi natin, Lord, tayo na, I am fully committed. I was scared to surrender my life to God because I know myself. Kilala ko po yung sarili ko. Alam ko ko ano yung mga gusto ko. Alam ko ko ano yung mga kahinaan ko. But when I decided to surrender my life to God, I said, God, I know that I cannot, but I know you can. Mga kapatid, it is a matter of surrender. Some churches today don't teach about the cross anymore. Ayaw nilang ituro ang kasalanan, ayaw nilang ituro ang cross, but without cross, gospel is not complete. Bakit ayaw nila itong ituro? Kasi gusto nila makamot yung mga tenga ng mga nanonood, yung mga kanilang audience, yung kanilang mga itchy ears, na kung ano lang yung gusto nilang marinig. Kaya nga may mga prosperity gospel na makikita tayo today because they want to please people, not God. I'm not judging them, not all of them, but this is reality, mga kapatid. In this church, we teach the cross because we want people to recognize that we need a Savior. To recognize, to acknowledge that we are sinners and we need a Savior. Mga kapatid, probably some of you are thinking, Lord, why am I so weak in my walk? Bakit ako lagi nangihina? May times na lulungkot pa rin ako. Lord, there are times gusto ko nang sumuko. Lord, bakit ganun ako? Konting pagsubok yung pananampalataya ako nawawala. Mga kapatid, probably because you don't have an exercise. You know, following God is an action word. It should be done with action. Ayaw natin ng exercise. Alam nyo po, sinubukan ko na yan eh. Lang beses na talaga. Napakahirap. But when we do it, may benefit. Some of us, we don't want problems. We don't want stress. We don't want trials. We don't want sufferings. We don't want hardships. Is it true? Yung totoo lang po. May magsasabi ba sa inyo, ah, gusto ko ng trials, gusto ko ng challenges, gusto ko ng stress. May makapagsasabi pa ba sa inyo ng ganyan? I believe, si Mara lang. <laughs> gusto niya ng challenges. Hindi trials, pero challenges. Gusto niya ng na-challenge siya. But anyway, the Lord will strengthen her. None of us, I believe, gusto nang tayo ay nahihirapan. But whether we admit it or not, these are inevitable. Hindi po ito maiiwasan. It will come. It will surely come. Darating sa buhay natin na tayo ay dadaan sa iba't ibang klase ng pagsubok. Iba't ibang bigat ng pagsubok. But you know what's the difference when we decide to follow Jesus? Kahit dumaan tayo sa mga ito. Kahit dumaan tayo sa mga ganitong bagay. Because Jesus is our lead. He walks before us. 
may nakaantabay sa atin. Can you imagine that? Habang naglalakad kayo, tinik na nga yung tinatapakan nyo, nadapa pa kayo, but someone will lift your hands up. Because Jesus is with you. And because He is with us, mas nagiging madali. And when, what happens after that, lumalakas tayo. Tumataas yung ating endurance. Tumataas ang antas ng ating pananampalataya. Ang ilan sa atin dito, yung mga dumaan sa maraming pagsubok, silang mataas ang pananampalataya. May narinig akong kapatiran nagsabi na maliliit na bagay na lang yan sa dami ng pinagdaanan ko. Mga kapatid, when we have Jesus on our side, we will surely experience trial, sufferings, challenges, stress, whatever. But because we have Him, napapadali na. And take note lang po ah, mga kapatid, para po sa ating lahat, paalala, pag maliit na problema, wag nyo nang problemahin. Sino ba yung nagsabi kagabi? And si Brother F. yata yun. Dapat daw ang mga pinoproblema, yung mga naghihikahos, yung mga nag-aagaw buhay, yung mga ganun, hindi yung simpleng bagay lang, petty things, pinoproblema natin, mas maraming tao na mas malalaki ang problema. And to continue mga kapatid, surrender to God's means denying yourself. Denying what we want. Denying what we desire. Denying what our flesh wants. Sabi po ng Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Ang kapatid, ibinigay na ng Panginoon yung buhay niya para sa atin. Mga kapatid, we don't serve God when it is convenient for us. We don't come to church just to satisfy our emotion. Because walking in the Spirit is not about emotions. We don't help others so that we will receive, we will receive help in return. We don't go to trainings because we don't we don't go to trainings because we don't have other things to do. Wala lang tayong magawa ko kaya gusto nating mag-training. We don't go to prayer meetings when we are assigned to exhort or to do the opening and closing prayer. Mga kapatid, it is a commitment. We don't bring our tithes and offering because we have extra money in our pocket. We do all this out of gratitude for all His goodness and out of surrender and obedience. Mga kapatid, it is time for all of us to rise up. Tama na ang pabebe. It is time for us to stand up and say, Lord, I surrender. It is no longer me but you. Pagharian mo ako. Gusto kong sumunod sa'yo. Nais ko ng kapangyarihan mo. Gusto nyo ba ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos? Mga kapatid, it is time. Kailan pa ba? Kailan pa tayo lubos na susuko at magpapasakop sa Diyos? If sinasabi mo ngayon na hindi mo kaya, konting panahon pa o kaya naman kapag hindi ka na busy or kapag okay na ang schedule mo, kapatid, only God knows the future. The book of James is clear. Sinasabi niya sa atin, you cannot boast about tomorrow. You cannot say, I will do business and do such and such because no one knows our future. Para lamang tayo mga vapor. Para tayo mga hamog na nandirito ngayon bukas wala na. Mga kapatid, we cannot boast. We cannot say, no, I'm hindi pa ako okay sa career ko. Let me finish this. And after that, when I'm ready, I'm going to serve God. I'm not ready yet because I'm not financially stable. When I'm financially stable, I will serve God. I cannot do it right now because yung family ko ayaw sumama sa akin. Mag-isa lang ako. Kailangan happy together kami. Mga kapatid, everything in this world are temporal. But your reward when you serve God and you surrender your life to Him is eternal. The time is not tomorrow. Time is not next month. Time is not next year. Neither in the next life. Because if we, if we will be with God eternally, what we do here on earth is just rehearsals for what we are going to do in heaven. Nagre-rehearse lang tayo mga kapatid. 
And if you are not going to be with God forever, there is no second chance. While we are here, while we are alive, that is the chance. Si kapatid, God is passionately in love with you. Mahal na mahal na mahal ka ng Diyos. Lahat tayo dito, mahal tayo ng Diyos. That is why He give us chance every day. And it is my prayer that we see every day of our lives as another chance to surrender to Him completely. And number five po, ask for empowerment. I know it's difficult, hindi po madali. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need to ask, pray for it, Lord. Hindi ko kaya. I need you. I need your power. Sabi po ng Luke 11, 9 to 13. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil... Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Just ask mga kapatid. God is ready to give you the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you say, Lord, hinanghina talaga ako. Meron akong kainaan na hindi ko kayang isuko sa'yo. Mga kapatid, kahit ano pa yan, kayang-kaya kang palakasin ng Diyos. And if we are soaked in the Holy Spirit, there will be change. Alam niyo po yung word na baptism, it sounds so religious for us, but totoo naman, but did you know that 2,000 years ago, it is a common word, a commercial word used by dyers, yung mga traders po ng mga tela. The dyer takes the piece of cloth and dips it into the dye, and when it, when it is soaked, Idinip siya dun sa dye, a change happens. The cloth accepted the texture, the color, and the character of the dye. What a change. And that is, that's what happens when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Change happens. We cannot be soaked, filled by the Holy Spirit without change. It's impossible. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, change happens. And that is called baptism. Mga kapatid, it is now for us to receive God's gracious gift and provision. Through asking and receiving in faith, the important thing is to ask in prayer. Is that matter what, it does not matter what, what words you use, there are no formula. What matters is the intent of the heart. Wala pong formula sa paghingi natin, sa pananalangin natin. Today, I believe God is doing something. God wants to empower you. God wants to empower each one of us. We will pray. Malapit na po akong magtapos. Whoever wants to surrender and be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will invite you to come. This is the first time we will pray for you. We will lay hands upon you. We don't normally do laying hands, but as the Holy Spirit leads, we will lay hands on you. Number six, receive in faith the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Receive in faith, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Number one, thirst. Number two, expect. Number three, repent. Number four, surrender. Number five, ask. And number six, receive. If you ask, you will receive. Receive in faith the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. 
The Bible says, have faith in God. Sabi ni Jesus, For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Have that faith mga kapatid, whatever you will ask God today to give you, he will give you. He will give you the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Mga kapatid, it is God who promised, not I. And He is willing. As long as we are willing to surrender our lives to Him. Now who among us here is saying, I need empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I want you to raise your hand. Be true. Be honest. As you surrender, the Lord will fill you. It is a matter of surrender. Mga kapatid, alam ko mahirap sa atin mag-surrender. But through experience, I can tell you. When you say, Lord, I surrender, God will empower you. Hindi nilayo ng Diyos sa kahit isa man sa atin na manatili tayo na kristyanong lulugo-lugo. Na manatili tayo na mga kristyanong uupo, papasok, aalis. Hindi ninais ng Diyos sa atin na hindi magamit ang buhay natin para sa Kanya. Lahat ng mayroon tayo galing sa Kanya. Acts 2.39 The promise is for you and your children and for all who are a part of. Mga kapatid, as I end, after the Pentecost happened, the disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit. The first pe preaching of Peter, 3,000 got converted. 3,000 people accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They healed ang mga may sakit na kahit pa niyo lamang nila ang mahawakan, gumagaling ang may sakit. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, you can do greater things. You can heal the sick people. You will just pray for them and they will be healed. And even if they don't, mga kapatid, do not worry because it is not your work. It is the work of God. If God doesn't want that person to be healed at that moment, God will do something else. God will do greater things. And sometimes, God wants us to be humble and patient and to be persistent. Last point, ob obey the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. Obedience matters. Mga kapatid, it is biblical. The, the Lord, God Almighty, He Himself promised that if we will obey, we will be blessed in the land. If you will read the book of Deuteronomy, everything na isinabi ng Diyos, nagawin nyo ito, sundin nyo ito. Kapag tayo ay susunod, there is a promise of blessing. Mga kapatid, we are called to obedience. Now, after, after asking for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and receiving in faith, that faith must be active and alive. And we are called to be witnesses. God wants us to experience that power so that we will be witnesses to other people. God wants us to be empowered so we can do the things He wants us to do. Mga kapatid, God has great plans for you, for me, for all of us. As we pray, Whoever wants, I'm challenging you, mga kapatid. I know it is difficult. Who wa whoever wants or whoever desires to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And you want to tell God, Lord, this is it. Ikaw na. Hindi na ako. I want to be empowered. I want to have a strength that comes from you. I invite you, kapatid, to come forward.
Let us all stand up, eyes closed. Do not mind the people around you as I call Pastor Joel also to pray. We will lay hands upon you if you want. Please turn off the lights and then we invite the Holy Spirit. Mga kapatid, God wants to use you. Hindi sa maliit na bagay, but greater things. God wants to empower you because He wants you to be witnesses of His greatness, of His sovereignty, and His power. 